So today I want to talk about an idea I heard a while ago and expand on it. It's to use computers to heat up homes and more. So whenever you use a computer, an electronic, you know it gets hot. This heat is usually wasted. It actually is bad for computer. It degrades the computer chip by and it degrades performance. The ways it degrades performance are that, um, for example, you have an electron here, and then you have this barrier, and this barrier prevents the electron from jumping when the circuit's off. When you have heat, the electron can gain extra energy and go through the barrier. That means a computer chip can get a signal that when it's supposed to be off, it's on. You might be like, why don't I feel this impact? Well, it doesn't really happen on a big scale. It only happens on tiny little micro scales that something will just randomly turn on. It can also degrade components because like chemical reactions happen faster the higher the heat. Um, you can see this with like stuff getting corroded at higher temperatures much more. It can also mess up mag magnetic memories and that can be like the magnet turns the mag magnet man magnetic states are stuff all have to be aligned pointing the right direction heat can randomly flip something that's turned pointed up pointed down heat can also stuff doesn't conduct electricity as well when it gets hotter um because there's more again electrons instead of being flowing smoothly are now just bumping around more randomly because they just came knocked into and bumped into stuff um, and also chemicals change the properties, like some chemicals are more reactive and hold on to electrons more. In higher heat, they'll give up electrons more easily. So whole dynamics changes. So there's a lot of reasons, and slowly it degrades the computer, or it just doesn't work as well. And computers have a lot of ways around this. They either cool it themselves down, they don't run as many computations, so that, or they run the same computation multiple times or with more power to get rid of like the little errors um, or, or they just stop and let themselves cool down to create. But if we could take this excess heat and use it, wouldn't that be great? And the idea that a couple websites have, which I'll link below, is to just use it to literally heat up homes and buildings. And then you kill one stuff. To, you kill a bird with one with stone, because then the only energy you really using is energy to compute, You're not using any energy to heat up your home, if your home gets full heating. The problem I see with this technology and such an idea is, why would you ever have to have a stable usage of a, having a stable usage for all of these problems is really hard if you think about it in the beginning. One of them is they want to use it for server input. Well, server input is very variable. Sometimes a site might get a lot of traffic, sometimes not. Sometimes locally it might get a lot, sometimes not. Other ones for home usage of computing, which again is highly variable. All these uses of computing are highly, highly, highly variable by how much you want to use. But there's a way we can get rid of that variability, and that's to have some backup programs that are just ready to run at any time. And I think I've come up with what I think are some good backup programs, and that's because scientists need more computation power all the time. When it's CERN computer, the CERN computers are producing millions of times more data than they can process. You can have some of that data go to home computing, and it just turns on and starts computing it randomly. Anytime it needs extra power, we're not using it for other usets, like home usets. Another one is there's a bunch of problems in protein folding and RNA that we just don't have enough computing power for. Again, these computers could run on those problems. So there's particle physics, there's biology, there's a bunch of other ones. And we could have those programs stored on there and just run it whenever we want to do. There's also a bunch of math problems that like figuring out the biggest prime number and Picking out bigger prime numbers is very important for um, actually computer security. 
and we can always just run through them with more and more software. The nice thing about these ones though, is if we're running these data science projects with the right way, it also means that these computers will not be running stuff that is vulnerable to hacking. So it'll be less communication when they're running with this if you worry about um, hacking with cloud computing and stuff like that. There are ways we can get rid of hacking these systems. Um, chance by having like barriers, so like you can have multi-thread barriers that one computer, part of the computer can't access easily the other part of the computer. Um, the more access point, the more it can get into it. But that gets hard to design and it's easy not to have it in the first place or limit access. And this is one way you could limit access and increase security. So I think this is a very practical idea. Um, my major issue would be not that these are not going to solve huge problems, is that um, right now they're very expensive, but if we use it for research purposes, maybe we could subsidize it for a research program, or the government could pay for it to promote research of particle physics or whatever research, or bio, research into biology, which is very important with RNA and genetics and all these other things or mathematical research, so the government could sub subsidize for that, research programs could subsidize, so it limits the cheap cost. It still uses a lot of electricity, but here's the thing, computers almost, a lot of the electricity computers go into is waste heat, so it's actually going to be quite efficient, comparable to a lot of other things. Um, let's look up computers efficiency right quickly. Um, electrical, um, that's not energy, so 30, 60 percent or less, but, um, let's see, uh, but yeah, it's, it, it's pretty well. Um, pretty low. I, I thought I remember like uh, 30 or 60 percent of energy is wasted, but like it's really high. Like that's <laughs> wow, they just give the efficiency. Um, So I'm, so I'm on Echoaza, which is plants trees, but it's not as good as Google. But if you, I do recommend you install Echoaza plant trees, but when you want an actual thing, and then this, this is going to be a bunch of this one, ones. Performance per watt. So performance per watt. So. Um, performance per watt. Yeah, I just don't. But yeah, it's it's like it was like something like I'll find it later. But it's something sixty percent. I do recommend the Equalizer, but it really looks like they just don't want to tell you. But to point it out, oh, okay, how much how much the brain uses? So brain is vastly more complicated brain and energy versus computer, that's what gives us an idea of how inefficient it is. Um, what? Okay. So we, okay, so the human brain would take 10 megawatts, which is about the size of a small, power plant, I know that, and our brain uses less than 20 watts. So that gives you an idea. It's literally orders of magnitude of wasted energy. So really, really efficient. But you still might need a lot to heat up your house, but it's going to be very similar to a regular heating bill. 
So I hope you found these ideas interesting. Um, and I hope you will. Um, and I hope if you have any questions, you just leave behind in the comments. Please like and subscribe. I'm trying to reach a thousand subscribers within like the next 10 to 11 months and 4,000 hours watch time, which is really hard, but I think doable if we work together. And please share. Sarah, thank you very much.